हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट ट्वेंटी एट थियरीज ऑफ ओरिजन ऑफ कास्ट सिस्टम एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑक्यूपेशनल थ्योरी ऑक्यूपेशनल थ्योरी प्रपाउंडेड बाय नेस्फील्ड एडवोकेट्स ऑक्यूपेशन एज द लोन फैक्टर फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दिस सिस्टम according to him before this system priesthood was not the exclusive monopoly of brahmins but later on when hems and rituals became more complex a section of people got themselves specialized and became the brahmins due to importance of sacrifices such people came to be more respected later they made this occupation hereditary theory after this other sections of people also organized themselves for securing privileges they did this in self defense and also in imitation of a group of people whom they held in higher esteem slater in his book dravian elements in indian culture emphasizes the fact that the caste is actually stronger in southern than in northern india and suggest that the caste arose in india before the aryan invasion as a result of occupations becoming hereditary and marriages being arranged by parents within the society of a common craft because sexual maturity developed early and trade secrets were thus preserved as a result of magic and religious ceremonies also exclusive occupational groups were built up marriage outside which became the prejudicial and the contrary to practice the aryan invasion had the effect of strengthening a tendency to associate difference of color and of strengthening also a tendency for caste to be placed in a scale of social prejudice he also maintains the existence in the pre aryan society of the indian of an order of priest magicians daniel isabson explains cast as arising from a combination of tribal origins functional guilds and a levitical religion and lays great stress on the tribe the turning point in the career of a tribe becomes when it abandons its wild and romantic life and adopts a particular occupation as its principal method of economic subsistence this is the guild stage in the caste history and is common at some period or the other of the economic progress to all in the world the formation of guilds of occupational groups naturally led to recognition of skills and importance of the various guilds in medieval time the guilds viewed with one another for predominance in accordance with their economic status exercising various degrees of pressure on the social life of the country the exaltation of the priestly guild was soon followed by the priest insisting on the hereditary nature of their occupational status and this led to the formation of the endogamous units as more and more of the guilds wanted to conserve the social status and privileges they enjoyed to the secure these permanently for the members of the guild later various other guilds followed suit and a hierarchical organization established itself chapel and kun trace the origin of caste to the absorption of aboriginal types 
and they also explain the formation of the new caste with reference to the emergence of new occupations. Now let us move to the next theory tribes and religious theory. From very early times there has been a gradual and salient change from tribes to caste. This change has taken place in a number of ways and it is believed that most of the lower and exterior caste of today were formerly tribes. Richelieu has mentioned four processes by which the transformation of tribes into caste is affected. The processes are the leading men of an aboriginal tribe having somehow got on in the world became independent landed proprietors managed to enroll themselves in one of the more distinguished castes. A number of ab origins embraced the tenets of Hindu religious sect and becoming Vaishnavas and giving up their tribal names. A whole tribe of ab origins or a section of tribe enrolling themselves in the rank of Hinduism under the style of a new caste which though claiming an origin of remote antiquity is really distinguishable by its name from any of the standard and recognized. A whole tribe of aborigines or a section thereof become gradually converted to Hinduism without abandoning their tribal designation. Richley mentions the case of the Bhumji of Western Bengal, a pure Dravidian race who lost their original language now speak only Bengali. They worship Hindu gods in addition to their own, the tendency being to relegate the tribal god to the woman. And the more advanced among them employ Brahman as the family priest. They still retain a set of floristic exogamous subdivision closely resembling those of the Mundas and the santals, but they are beginning to forget the totems and the names of themselves will probably soon be abandoned in favor of aristocratic designations. The tribe will then have become a caste and will go on giving up its customs that are likely to betray its true descent. To these four process, Mazumdar has added a fifth in which an individual member of an ab origin or semi ab origin tribe adopts the surname and gotra of a particular caste, manages to enroll himself as a member of that particular caste and gradually intermarries with the members of that caste. His wealth and influence attract members of the caste as he aspires to belong and thus in the long run he may establish himself as a permanent member of that caste. Cultural contact with Hindu caste leads to the adoption by the tribes of the Hindu beliefs, rituals, customs and to participation in Hindu festivals and attendance at Hindu temple. The process of gradual evolution from the aborigines to a higher class Hindu is a main feature of social evolution in India which government offices have noticed and commented upon it.
Bhuyas present an excellent example of how from the aboriginal state, caste or group differences and distinction arose gradually as man disclaimed earlier association and claimed a new importance to themselves both divine and social. Similarly, there is a great parallel between the Mundas social organization and the Hindu organization of Gotra and Varna. The Mundas are now found in certain parts of the Bengal, Bihar and Urissa where they are known under three different names Mundas, Santas and Hos. The Santas are divided into 12 main septs of which the trace of one sept only could not find. Most probably the lowest sept has become completely Brahmanized or Chatrinized and their descendants are not likely to give out their sacraments. Now let us move to the next point family and marriage. This explanation given by the Senate holds that the principle of exogamy is the main basis of the Hindu caste system. In his opinion, caste is the normal development of the ancient Aryan institution which assumed a particular form because of the peculiar conditions in India like prohibition of marriage within one's gotra, pollution by touch with lower classes, prohibition in intercaste, dining, etc. He has presumed the beginning of caste system in the form of Varna division to the Indo-Iranian period because of the fourfold division of the society in the Rig Vedic India. Richley mentions that the invading Aryans displayed a marked antipathy to marriage with personas of alien black race and devised an elaborate system of taboo for the prevention of such union. But intermarriage could not altogether be prevented. Now let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with a self-learning podcast.